Hi, in this video we are going to look at this book. It is called Introduction to Mathematical Statistics. It is the third edition. It is by Robert B. Hogg and Alan T. Craig. It's a hardcover. Let's open it up and take a look inside this book. Let's turn the page. Here's the copyright, 1970. This is the third printing. Earlier edition copyright, 1958, wow. And here are the contents. It starts with distributions of random variables. So we have lots of cool stuff here, right? Uh, algebra of sets, set functions, the probability set function, random variables, the probability density function, the distribution function, certain probability models, mathematical expectation, some special mathematical expectations, and Chebyshev's inequalities. That's all in chapter one. Chapter two is conditional probability and stochastic independence. So we have conditional probability, marginal and conditional distributions, the correlation coefficient, and stochastic independence. Three is on some special distributions. We have the binomial distribution, the Poisson distribution, the gamma and chi-square distributions, the normal distribution, the bivariate normal distribution. And then, wow, it's a lot more, so I'm going to stop reading every single subject. Wow, there's just so much. I mean, look at all of this. Whoa, tons of mathematics, right? Very, very, it's got hypothesis testing, um, and then it has answers to selected exercises. Page 404, let's go straight to that. So we have some answers here in the back of the book to some of the exercises, which um, it's helpful to have something, right? So that's good that we have uh, some answers and there's an index, there's an index. Distributions, I, I just gotta give it a whiff, sorry, just, oh, it smells wonderful. Distributions of random variables. Many kinds of investigations may be characterized in part by the fact that repeated experimentation under essentially the same conditions is more or less standard procedure. For instance, in medical research, interest may center on the effect of a drug that is to be administered, or an economist may be concerned with the prices <clears throat> of three specified commodities at various time intervals, or the ergonomist may wish to study the effect that a chemical fertilizer has on the yield of a cereal grain. Yeah. Algebra of sets. And here we have some set theory stuff, really basic. Um, it's not hard at all. Uh, it's, it's good that it's in the book because, you know, if you don't know this stuff, it's good to, to see it. Um, you know, there are uh, lots of examples here, which is good. There's some more examples here, some Venn diagrams. Some exercises. Some integrals here. So, you know, it moves pretty quickly. I just gotta give it another whiff. Sorry, it just ah uh, smells amazing. Yeah, it moves pretty quickly. It's an old school book on statistics, right? Um, and it's mathematical statistics. I want to emphasize that. So that that's why it's done this way. Um, typically. Um, you know, who would study this today? So math majors typically, um, well, I was actually required when I was a math major to do two semesters of mathematical statistics, but um, not every school has that requirement and requirements change. Um, so, but that was the requirement when I got my math degree. I don't think it's that anymore. Um, and it's tough. It's tough. This is a tough subject for math majors and for stats majors. I had a friend who was a stats major and he had a 4.0 uh, until he took this class, right? And then he got C's in both in both uh, the first part and the second part. He struggled a lot. Um, I actually, I think I dropped the class or withdrew. I think it might have been, I forgot which one. Um, dropped or withdrew uh, the first time I took it because it was too much. I was taking advanced calculus one and I was just, and some other stuff. And I was just like, no. So I took it later and I did good. So yeah, it's a, it's a different beast, you know, and 
if you're not used to it, I mean, it could, it could, it could be pretty tough. So, yeah. And this book, you you could use this for self study. Like you could just like read a little bit every day and use it for self study uh, because you have those answers in the back of the book. Uh, let's let's look let's look here. Let's look at the statistical um, hypotheses. Let's read this. Some examples and definitions. The two principal areas of statistical inference. This is important. Are the areas of estimation of parameters. Okay, so like estimating populate the population mean is an example of a parameter. Um, uh, and tests of statistical hypotheses. The problem of estimation of parameters, both point and interval estimation, has been treated. In this chapter, some aspects of statistical hypotheses and test of statistical hypotheses will be considered. The subject will be introduced by way of example. So here's an example. Let it be known that the outcome X of a random experiment is N, theta, comma, 100. For instance, X may denote a score on a test which score uh, we assume to be normally distributed with mean theta and variance 100. Okay, let us say that past experience with this random experiment indicates that theta is 75. All right, suppose owing that possibly to some research in the area pertaining to this experiment, some changes are made in the method of performing this random experiment. It is then suspected that no longer does theta equal 75, but now that theta is greater than 75. Hmm. There is as yet no formal experimental evidence that theta is bigger than 75. Hence the statement, theta bigger than 75, is a conjecture or a statistical hypothesis. In admitting that the statistical hypothesis, theta greater than 75, may be false, we allow, in effect, the possibility that theta is less than or equal to 75. Thus, there are actually two statistical hypotheses. First, the unknown parameter theta is less than or equal to 75. That is, there has been no increase in theta. Second, that the unknown parameter theta is greater than 75. Accordingly, the parameter space is omega. Here, theta can be any real number. We denote the first of these hypotheses by the symbol h sub 0, and the second by the symbols h sub 1. Since the values theta greater than 75 are alternatives to those where theta is less than or equal to 75, the hypothesis theta greater than 75 is called the alternative hypothesis, okay? Needless to say, h sub 0 could be called the alternative to h1. However, the conjecture here, theta greater than 75, which is, let's keep reading this, made by the, whoops, did I skip? I think I skipped. I lost my page here. No, statistical hypotheses, which is, here it is. Yep. Let me yeah, zoom in here so you can see a little bit better which is made by the research worker is usually taken to be the alternative hypothesis. In any case, the problem is to decide which of these hypotheses is to be accepted. To reach a decision, the random experiment is to be repeated a number of independent times, say n, and the results observed. That is, we consider a random sample, say x sub 1 through x sub n, from a distribution which is uh, normal with mean theta and variance 100, and we devise a rule which will tell us what decision to make once the experimental values have been determined. Okay, such a rule is, uh, is called a test of hypotheses against the alternative. Okay, there is no bound on the number of rules or tests which can be constructed. And it goes on. Yeah, I mean, that's one way to introduce it. And it's, and it's certainly, I'm not saying it's a bad way. Um, yeah. Yeah. There are different explanations of that, I think, and I've seen different explanations in different books, and that's one of the reasons I think it's really good to have more than one book. Um, so I feel like the those really beginner, beginner books on stats, the ones that don't show you how to do anything by hand, just like rely on software, a lot of times those books do have really good intuitive explanations uh, about a lot of things. So i got to give this another wave here. Just awesome. Yeah. Anyways, I'll look for this book. If I can find it, I will leave a link in the description in case you want to check it out. It's a tough subject, but it's cool to learn. And this is a good book. Take care.